Hi everybody, in this video, the third video about the radial tears, right? Hopefully the last one, I'm going to talk about the partial meniscal tears, the partial radial tears and the radial tears that occur uh, 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 in the transition zones, in the curved zones between the anterior horn and the meniscal body or the meniscal body and the posterior horn. Okay, so let's go. First, let's talk about the partial radial tear. So here in this drawing, this is a partial radial tear in, uh, in the meniscal body. And again, let's see here in the plane that is parallel to the tear, that is the coronal plane. One, one slice before the tear, we can see all the meniscus. Uh, at the level of the tear, at the plane and at the level of the tear, we... We, we are going to see this image here, right? We're going to see the, the peripheral portion of the meniscus, but the inner portion of the meniscus, uh, we will not see this part because that's the area of the radial tear, okay? And in one slice uh, after that, we will see the meniscus again. So that is the difference between the complete radial tears when we have uh, the ghost sign, when there is the, the ghost sign, the, the meniscus, it doesn't appear in one cut, for example, and in the partial tear, it's just a portion of the meniscus that doesn't appear, and this is the trun a truncation of the meniscus, but I also like to call this sign the Casper sign, because it's like a little ghost, right? It's a partial ghost sign. So remember that, the Casper sign, but also the, let's say that the more uh, serious name or the more scientific name or the name that we, we, we're going to put in our report is the truncation of the meniscus, okay? So that's how we, we are going to see the partial meniscal tear uh, on the same plane of the tear. For the meniscal body is the coronal plane, for the anterior horn and the posterior horn is the sagittal plane. So now let's see how we uh, will see this tear uh, on the plane that is perpendicular to the radial tear. So here in the plane that is perpendicular to the radial tear, in this case is the sagittal plane, uh, we will see the cleft sign. Look here, uh, we will see a cleft. Uh, at the inner margin of the meniscus, and we will continue to see this cleft, but it's just a partial cleft sign because at the periphery, the meniscus is normal, okay? So that is the cleft sign for the partial radial tears. It's a partial cleft sign. You're not going to see the cleft sign in all the images because it's a, it's a partial tear. And here... We can, uh, we can see in this, in this image here, the coronal plane, uh, here is the uh, lateral meniscus, and here is the body of the lateral meniscus, and notice here that the meniscus is truncated right here, and here it returns to its normal uh, morphology, here the morphology is also normal, but here it is truncated. We can't see the inner portion of the meniscus. So that's uh, the, the Casper sign, right? So we can see the truncation of the meniscus right here. And that's a sign of a partial radial tear. And now on the sagittal plane, we, it's possible to see the cleft sign in this image here. And this other image, he going more to the periphery of the meniscus, we can still see a little bit of this cleft sign, but it's not complete. And in the last image here, uh, we can see the cleft sign, but it's just get, uh, passing through the, the, it's just a partial volume of the meniscus at this region right here. And that's a partial tear on the sagittal plane or in the perpendicular plane of the tear. And here in the axial plane, remember, use all the three planes to find out the radial tear. The radial tear is in this region right here. Of course, I, I, I triangulate. I put all the images together, and that's why I'm sure that the region of the radial tear is this region right here. This is a case with 2D sequences. It's not a 3D sequence. With 3D sequence, sequ sequences, it's much easier. 
to reconstruct and find the, the tears on the axial plane but with two d sequences we gotta be lucky to find these radial tears sometimes now I'm, i'd like to talk this uh, about this the truncation sign or the truncation of the meniscus when you face a meniscal truncation you gotta think about radial a partial radial tear okay, okay the casper sign uh, you got to think about a part big tear. It's like a, a radial oblique tear. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But you also have to think about a meniscal tear with a mi mi migrated or migrated fragment as a flap, a bucket handle tear. And another thing that you got to remember is uh, a, pars a post surgical alteration uh, in this case a partial meniscectomy so you gotta you got to remember that this the, the, the meniscal truncation uh, it's not a it's not pathognomonic of a partial radial tear there are different pathologies that affects that affect the meniscus that can generate this truncation uh, of the meniscus on the MRI of the knee and you have to be aware of this so let's return to our radial tear here but now i want to talk about the radial tears that occur in these areas right here in these areas where the meniscus is curved because here the radial the radial tear it looks like a radial oblique tear or a part a part big tear and i'm gonna show you uh, some cases of that so when you when we uh when we perform slices through this tear uh that's how this tear we can see this tear on the mri of the knee so here i performed three cuts or three slices on the sagittal plane and look that in this first cut the 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 area that is irregular or the meniscus is truncated at this portion in this region right here in this this second slice it sometimes it looks like a, a vertical tear but look that in the other image right here the image the the the, the lesion it's uh going to the periphery of the meniscus so that's the marching cleft sign look that the cleft sign it marches from the inner portion of the meniscus to the periphery of the meniscus and so this is uh how we will see for example a radial tear at the transition of the meniscal body and the posterior horn okay so the same thing will apply to the to the other plane now here for example the coronal plane uh, it's the marching cleft sign again in this first image we can see the the the, mar the cleft sign this area in this second plane the second slice right here we can see that the mar the, the cleft it's not in the same place and in this third image here we can see that the cleft is in is in a different place okay so that that's the marching cleft sign and in case like that the axial plane will help us a lot okay because in the axial plane we can see that the tear is linear is not curved it's not a part big tear so um we gotta check double check the axial plane in cases like that in this case here it's a partial radial tear in the or the transition zone between the meniscal body and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and in the coronal plane we can see the cleft sign just in this region right here in the act in the sagittal plane we can see the uh, irregularity of the meniscus in the at the at the inner portion right here and we can see in the second image here the irregularity of the meniscus the tear in this region right here so here is the tear in the coronal plane in the sagittal plane you can see that there in this image here and also in this image here so here we can see the uh, we can uh, appreciate the marching cleft sign in this case right here in the sagittal plane look at the axial plane that there is in this region right here again the 2d sequence it's uh, with the 3d sequences uh, it's um, it's much better to uh, to identify the stairs but this is in this region right here especially because i am triangulating with this other images here so i'm confident that that's the area of the radial tear so 
let me show you another case. This case right here, this patient uh, had a, a, a knee trauma with a rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament. There is also a vertical tear, a longitudinal vertical tear uh, on, in the medial meniscus. But here in the lateral meniscus, we can see this image right here between the meniscal uh, body and the anterior horn in the transition in the curve uh, in this curve between these two regions so here is the is, here is the tear uh, here we can see the tear in this area right here when you go to the sagittal plane we can see a, a small irregularity here a small irregularity here and here so this is a marching cleft sign of a, a radial uh, a radial tear so marching cleft sign the radial tear in the transition zone between the anterior horn and the meniscal body here it's just uh, increasing the the size of the image for you to appreciate the marching cleft sign right here and look at the axial plane the ax in the axial plane you can see beautifully this tear in this region right here it's almost a complete tear in this case here and the axial plane was the best plane to identify this tear so the axial plane strikes again here it was very important to define the the radial tear in this area right here so uh i'm I, i'm approaching the end of this video and in this video i'd like uh, I'd, I'd like to show this uh this findings right the findings of uh partial radial tears with the casper sign or the truncate meniscal truncation and if you see a meniscal truncation don't think about just about the partial radial tear there are other lesions that can cause a truncation of the inner portion of the meniscus and uh, be aware of the radial tears in this areas of transition between the anterior horn and the meniscal body or meniscal body and the posterior horn because they are hard to identify they are hard to 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 find and use and abuse of the axial plane to identify the axial uh the, to identify the radial tears especially in these regions okay so that's it for this video uh hopefully uh, it was a, a, a good overview about the radial tears. And that's it for now. Have a great day. Thank you for your attention. And see you in the next video.